Greetings, Bermuda. Aaron Hill of Generation Next. Here with our only, Bermuda's only Olympic medalist, Mr. Clarence Hill. Nice to have you with me, cousin. Yes, Appreciate cousin. you taking yes. the time. Thank we've been you trying to make me. this thing happen for quite yeah. some time now. Yeah. And um, I'm grateful that we've been able to sit down and have this discussion. Sometimes, you know, in, in life generally, specifically here in Bermuda, we focus on, you know, where people are, uh, but we don't focus on their journey. You know, the obstacles that they've had to overcome and some of the trials and tribulations that they've had to endure to get where they are. And I would like to honor Mr. Clarence Hill today, give him his platform to share his story and how he believes that other young people, specifically our young men, can learn from his journey. So cousin, I'm gonna transfer the floor over to you. Um, share, share with the young people of Bermuda, the people of Bermuda generally, your story. You know, the 76 Olympics in Montreal, where you were able to secure that bronze medal, medal and uh, your journey since that point. Okay, thank you, thank you, Aaron. Yes, uh, Bermuda, uh, young ones more, more so. And my name is Clarence Hill, and I'm the only Olympic medalist in the history of Bermuda. And before I even went to Montreal in 1976, I had a challenge in my life. I was dealing with a drug addiction, marijuana first at the time, and also dealing with home, home issues. But being the person that I am, right, I fought through it. I knew what I wanted to do concerning sports. Because I was raised in the United States, even though I was born in Bermuda, I was raised in the United States, New Jersey. I came back home to Bermuda in 1972, and then I ventured to Permac Youth Center. And that's where I started to, to box. That's where my boxing career started. My amateur boxing career started at uh, Permac Youth Center. And as soon as I got into the door of Permac Youth Center, I told the director of Permac Youth Center, which was Sammy Wilson, that I'm going to become the heavyweight champion of Bermuda. And if I had the opportunity to go to the Olympics, I'm going to win an Olympic medal. They laughed at me. But I knew my intentions. I knew the heart that I had, that I still have, right? You know, but I wanted everybody to understand that even though, you know, I had the heart to become the heavyweight champion of Bermuda, the struggles are still with, with the, the struggles are still here, you know? Even when I was representing, getting ready to represent Bermuda, I had to go through struggles with the government of my country to get them to help me to prepare myself for the Olympic Games. You know, because being that I was the only heavyweight boxer in Bermuda, you know, to prepare myself to go to the Olympics, a lot of things that I had to do. I had to travel to fight, because I couldn't fight here in Bermuda because there was nobody here to fight me, you know. The, the guys that were here after I beat them was nobody else, so I had to travel or you had to bring in opponents for me to fight. And at the same time, you know, I'm young, I'm growing up. At the same time, growing up, I'm being involved with peer pressure. You know, friends, people my age, they were doing crazy stuff. And being that I wanted to set in, be, you know, to be in with the inner crowd. Sometimes I did what they did, mm -hmm. even though you know I'm an athlete, right? Even though I knew certain things I couldn't do, but to, to fit in, I was doing certain things that they were doing just to fit in, you know. So what I'm saying is this here to the young ones who are listening, right? Sometimes we need to let that go. If you knew, like I know today, things that I was doing back then was wrong and not right. If I had somebody that was in my corner back then to advise me, to help me not to do it, I think my life would have been much more better than what it is today. So what I'm saying to the young ones who are listening, right, don't follow the in crowd, you know. Do the right things, because the right things get you to the right places. The wrong things get you to the wrong places, you know what I mean? So, because as, as we know, there's a lot of things happening here in Bermuda for the young ones. They're dying on bicycles. They're shooting each other. Drug addiction is happening with a lot of the young ones. 
boys and girls, right? You know, and you know, I'd be the first to 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 lend out a helping hand to the young ones because I've been there. You know, I know the drug addiction. I've been in jail. You know what I mean? And I'm the heavyweight champion of Bermuda. I'm the Olympic medalist of Bermuda. And I've had and I've had a drug addiction. I'm not too long coming off one. Let's say two, three years, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I still struggle because the temptation is still there. Sure. You know, for such a small island that Bermuda is, the temptation is still there. Mm -hmm. So we have to really be wary on the things we do and the people that we hang around with. Because when we think we're hanging around people that look good or dress good, right? We're hanging around the wrong people. And look what happens. We fall into the trap, you know? We are falling into the trap. A lot of the young ones today are falling into the trap. Once you fall into the trap, and you're into the trap, we find to say to ourselves how we can get out. And so what do, um, you, what do you see? Obviously we see, or we're experiencing as an island, mm -hmm. uh, trouble with our young men, uh, anti-social behavior, mm -hmm. gang violence. Um, just as recently as the past few weeks, we've seen a young man tragically murdered. Um, and that's that's a frequent occurrence, unfortunately, in the Bermuda of today. And I know that you've spoken out in the past with respect mm. to how you believe young men particularly can use sports as an outlet. Yes. Um, can you talk about or share with the young people how you use boxing as an outlet and how you believe that, you know, as a community, we can begin to, and it may not just be boxing, but sports in general, yeah. that focus. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sports in general, boxing, running, whatever, sports in general is an outlet to, to the way we do things here I mean, as a youth. Because they help me, you know, because when you into sports, track and field, boxing, it's a lot of dedication that you have to do to prepare yourself, to get strong, sit-ups, running, eating properly, sleeping properly, you know, not hanging in the streets, not drinking. You know, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a lot of dedication that sports helps a young person. It helps him to dedicate himself to sports. It takes you away from the frame of mind of want to hang out in the street, want to do drugs, right? Or, or want to drink rum or, or, or just do crazy stuff, right? You know, because as I was telling you a little while back, Aaron, right? Sports helped me a whole lot because, you know, I came from a family, you know, of a brother, sister, my father, and like I said, I was raised in the States, but it seemed like I was the black sheep of the family, you know, and I was, I was going down the road to destruction, mm -hmm. you know, and I was wondering what I'm going to do to come out of that feeling and, and that situation I found myself in. So what happened to me, I ventured into a place called YMCA, uh -huh. it, was in, it was in New Jersey. I walked in because I saw boxing. And I went in and I asked the person who was the trainer, can you teach me how to box? And he says, yeah, I can teach you how to box. So I got in the ring, he taught me how to box. And trust me, that took away all that I felt about doing evil. You know, that took away that for me because I started to dedicate myself to train for boxing. Because when you start training for boxing, any sport, you got to sleep properly, you got to eat properly. You know, a lot of things that you, you wouldn't ordinarily do, you have to start doing it. Yes. And that's what I did. And that's what caused me to, to change my way of living in my life. No, absolutely. And I think that you've been an inspiration, certainly mm -hmm. to some of the young, up and coming and prominent boxers that we have in Bermuda today. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Bermuda has heard um, and seen, witnessed uh, the triumph of Mr. Nicky Bascom, mm -hmm. who spoke about how boxing had an impact on his life. Um, even the young budding boxer, Mr. Tyler Christopher, who yeah, just recently yeah. had an article in the paper mm -hmm. talking about how boxing had changed and influenced his life. He's now traveling the world representing mm -hmm. Bermuda. Yeah. And so these are the types of opportunities that young Bermudians can uh, come to expect when they commit themselves to a craft, mm -hmm. whether it be boxing, whether it be debating, whether it be football, um, but something to take your time off of, you know, the distractions, yes, I think yes. you, you might classify them as. Um, but shifting more a bit to, um, what we want you to be remembered for. Mm -hmm. What Bermuda, I think, I think we can concede, has failed to 
you know, show the, the due honor and respect to its only Olympic medalist. Um, can you talk about that journey? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's helpful. It's, it really feels like uh, it's, a hurt. it's a pain that I go through daily, you know, to know that I have represented my country, right, with, with my heart, feeling that, you know, I've done something nice and, and, and to represent my country, then to go and win an Olympic medal and then to come back and not be recognized for it. You know, it, it, it pains me a whole lot, right? You know, at uh, one time, I even started to to allow myself to get into trouble because of that. I just didn't care anymore because they wasn't really caring for me. So then I said to myself, why should I care? So I, had to, I had to look in the mirror, man, man in the mirror, right? I had to look in the mirror and say, well, why should I allow myself to go through changes and get myself into trouble and, you know, and disgrade, disgrade myself because they didn't, my government didn't, appreciate me for what I did, mm -hmm. you know. So today, you know, I appreciate myself, you know, because Bermuda knows what I've done. It's in the history books, you know, it's in black and white. Even though I'm still feeling a little dawn that they see other people's uh, achievement better than mine, you know, because the question I have, and I always have this question, and I'm going to say it now, right? You tell me in, in this world, even in Bermuda, who has not made a mistake? We all make mistakes, right? And I've made a mistake, right? To my drug addiction through you know, stuff that I've done, which I'm not proud of. So that's why you know, I'm glad to sit here and talk to the young ones so they can see that, you know, that word is not a great word. You know, it's not, it's not really good because you, know, you end up living it the rest of your life, right? You know, but for me, to say this here is for the people that's in power to understand what I'm saying. That we all have made a mistake to come short of the glory of God. You know, because I've given my life into the Lord now, right? And we all have come short of the glory of God. So why do darts at me and we all make mistakes? Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I think, I think, cousin, one of the things that can be learned from your experience, and I think you just touched on it, is for young people to understand that you are making the decisions and the commitments mm -hmm. to have a better life and achieve what you're going to achieve for yourself yes. you know and take pride in knowing that you are only accountable for your actions mm -hmm. and you cannot expect on the receiving end or mm -hmm. be living your life for mm -hmm. the recognition of somebody else mm -hmm. whoever that may be mm -hmm. whether that be a government whether that mm -hmm. be a parent mm -hmm. or you know a, a loved one mm -hmm. you have to live life for yourself you know mm -hmm. and you have to hold yourself accountable because I think that you will concede that during your journey it was you know Know, your feeling of disappointment mm -hmm. uh, that you didn't get what you felt was mm -hmm. was due to you what is due to you yeah. um, that caused you to you know seek these various outlets that led to your downfall but I think there's a second lesson in it and that lesson is the fact that like you said none of us are perfect mm -hmm. and the young people of today stand at an advantage to have mm -hmm. your journey where mm -hmm. you've made these mm -hmm. mistakes so that they don't have to make them themselves mm -hmm. And um, that's one of the key lessons, you know, we've all been there. My life course, my journey to where I am today and where I'm headed wasn't a straight and narrow path, right. you know. Right. And I look at some of the decisions that I've made in my past, in my youth, and they are the best decisions. At, mm. at the age of 15 years old, I ran away from home, mm. you know, and I was mm. sent abroad to Utah. But I finished school two years ahead, mm. ahead of my prayers. Mm -hmm. You know, I was away from home for two years and that was a struggle, mm. you know, a time that at the time of experience it you felt that this is the worst time mm -hmm. of my life you know but looking back on it in hindsight it was the best thing that could mm -hmm. have ever happened mm -hmm. to you and I think that your contribution to Bermuda to our young people to our community um, is not just through your your triumphs in mm -hmm. achieving that uh, bronze medal at the Olympics but also through your tribulations yes, because yeah. young people are able to see well here's a even people who reach the heights of society right. who reach the heights of accomplishments they still have flaws they have yeah. imperfections yeah. and it, it, it is a lesson to young people that you don't have to be perfect right. but you also don't have to make the mistakes that other people made yeah. and so through your journey hopefully yeah. other young people will be mm -hmm. able to see it and be able to learn from it and say well listen you know I know that you're always you know contactable mm -hmm. if you'd like to share mm -hmm. how young people can get in touch with you mm -hmm. um, and and so that you can stay in touch with the community I know that the government is in discussions with you with respect to a boxing center. Hopefully that materializes mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. Um, 
but how would you say that you at this point in time taking the power into your own hands let's say that the government does nothing else with respect to that boxing center how are you going to contribute to Bermudians? How can young Bermudians who see Clarence Hill as an inspiration, as an idol, get in touch with you? Okay, what I do now, right, is at Controversial Gym, where we course from uh, Victoria Park. Yes. I go there daily and I train young men downstairs. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, my number is 703-1272. And any young man, even women, young, young ladies who want like learn how to fight, you know, you can contact me down at Controversial Gym or my number, 703-1272. Another thing I want to say, Ernie, is to say, right, that even though we are going through, we might go through changes, young ones, that we need to understand that we don't need to continue on with the, the type of attitude that we carry. We can change, okay, mm -hmm. because look at where our attitudes and our behavior is taking us. If it's, if it's taking it somewhere we don't want to be, then guess what? Only you can change it. And I think Martin Luther yeah. King Jr. has the famous quote, the time is always right to do what is right. What is right. And so mm -hmm. even if other fellow young people mm -hmm. find themselves charting down the wrong course, recognize this is not where I want to we be in life, it. it's never too late. Yeah, never it's too never late. too late and you never are a living late. testimony yeah, to that fact. never too late. We can change it, man. You know? Because it's better to walk upright than to crawl. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's always better to walk upright. You see where you're going, then to crawl on your stomach and care for that where you're going. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, cousin, I would really like yeah. to thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing your mm -hmm. contact details with the rest mm -hmm. of Bermuda. Mm -hmm. I would encourage the Bermudians, fellow young people who are inspired by Mr. Clarence Hill, Bermuda's only Olympic medalist, to get in touch with him, learn more about his story. This is a gentleman who is personable, who is eager to share his journey. We've been trying to make this happen, I want to say, mm. for over a year now. Mm. So I'm glad that we've been able mm. to finally sit down and make it happen. But I just would like to thank you and encourage people to get in touch with you. You can share your journey and be an impact, uh, have an impact on the, the lives of our young people uh, moving forward. And, and also, uh, like you said, uh, somewhere in the near future, I'm endeavoring in writing a book. Yes. Right, I've got a couple of pages written, mm -hmm. and the title of the book will be called My Fight for Life. My Fight for you know, Life. Fight for Life. Because life is a fight, it's a fight. See, we have to fight to do everything that's right. It's not easy doing what's right. It's so, it's so easy doing wrong, but it's hard trying to do right. So today, I fight for life. I fight to do the right things today, you know. Because I feel that I see the right things are the best things. Man. Even though you might not make a million dollars in doing the right things, but uh, at least you feel comfortable with yourself by doing the right things. And there's a saying that those who don't know that life is war don't know what prayer is for. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it is a battle, yeah. you know, yes. but that's why we're grateful to have individuals mm -hmm. like you who are willing to contribute, you know, the various aspects mm -hmm. of their journey that can have an impact. And I would encourage anybody who can give any assistance to Mr. Hill with respect to uh, ensuring that his book is written mm -hmm. while he is here with us. Um, that is an important thing as we just had that discussion, uh, cousin, is like, listen, life isn't forever. Yeah. One thing that we know is that we're not going to be here forever. No yeah. matter how old or young we are, yeah. we're not here forever. Not here forever. And it is important for Bermuda to honor our heroes, honor those who have you know, set an example for young people who have reached those heights, who have had trials and tribulations, but have had the audacity, who have had the courage mm -hmm. to acknowledge them and contribute back to the community. So again, cousin, I'd like to thank you. This is Aaron Hill of Generation Next with Bermuda's only Olympic medalist, Mr. Clarence Hill. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Yes, cousin.